Good morning, everybody. I am 10 days out from the Open Debut Legion Sports Fest. Just got up today. Uh, it's 6 a.m., so I actually have lab work today uh, through LabCorp, which it's cool. I mean, I wear my lab suit life extension, <clears throat> and uh, you can now schedule LabCorp to come to your house and draw labs, which is extremely convenient. So um, I like to get these labs done close to the show to see like the worst of the worst and what I need to do post-show uh, stack design wise with, with PDs to manage health and uh, maybe things that shouldn't be in place or things that are okay to be in place and then managing my supplements from there too for uh, addressing these health markers. But anyway, I got up because they come between seven and nine, um, need to be fasted. Now fasting doesn't mean don't drink water. I did train yesterday, but I had to do it after a train day. Usually I would wait after an off day, but just the way the schedule is, I had to do it today. So anyway, go get a half gallon of water down before they come, just so I'm hydrated and not having a lab skewed. We're just gonna walk through today. I'm gonna take through a day of eating. Um, I woke up at 221.4 today, which has actually been the, the lightest I've been in weeks. Renee's asleep, so I didn't want to take like pics yet and wake her up and bother her. But I like, I'm in the bathroom. I, I just like, we have mirrors in there. I can look through my look, and I've done this for so long, self coaching, that I, I know when I wake up and I'm hard, hard and have that uh, grainy look. Like I can, I feel it right away, flex my calves. I just feel like I could um, squeeze everything super hard in my calves and they look grainy. Um, but my upper body is a little harder to flex, so I know I'm a little on the flatter side day, so likely more food's gonna go in. <clears throat> but again, I just got up, so we'll, we'll assess one thing at a time and get these labs taken care of first. We'll see if they let me film them doing the lab work, but and we can uh, talk after the fact of what labs I pulled. Well guys, I am still waiting for the lab to come. <laughs> I uh, went ahead and did my morning like walk with Logan. Got in about 4,500 steps, just drinking water still, waiting. Go ahead and hit some posing pics too so you can see pretty much what the fasted look looks, looks like here. Yeah, let's check it out. Well, that's where we're at. So with labs, just I'll go ahead and talk about them now. I do the weight loss panel through life extension and that'll give me a CBC, CMP, a lipid. I get a vitamin D, high, sensi high sensitivity, um, CRP, so I can look for inflammation. Um, I did add on a cystatin C. So it's a mo little bit more, if you're a bodybuilder with high lean body mass, creatinine is almost always elevated and it's you estimate GFR off it, so it's a calculation. And with creatinine also being muscle related, it can be elevated and you have a low GFR. Mine's almost always low because of that, so I use cystatin C, which isn't dependent on lean body mass, and calculate my GFR based on that. So add that lab on. Also added on uh, creatine kinase, just because if liver enzymes are up, ALT, AST, and if creatine kinase is up in accordance with that, creatine kinase is mainly an enzyme in the heart and also the uh, skeletal muscle. So we're seeing like, hey, AST, ALT is elevated. Knowing that I was gonna be training, if creatine kinase is up as well, then I kind of know that, hey, this is more so uh, muscle related, not actual um, liver stress. And usually we might see creatine kinase three, four times normal, which liver enzyme elevation alongside that would make, make sense. Also, it comes with a hormone panel, which isn't a big deal at this point. Thyroid is, um, it does come with a cortisol. Don't really worry much about that, just more so, because cortisol is kind of like a blood glucose, like you might just slept shit and it could be elevated just for the day. 
Uh, it does come with a fasting serum insulin. I don't really need that one because I know insulin is just going to be so low that it, because I'm so lean. Uh, but you could, you know, calculate your HOMA IR off that of how insulin sensitive you are. If you have a fasting insulin, fasting blood glucose, you can calculate that measure, which is is a great way to see your insulin sensitivity. More applicable, like if we're in the off season setting, and the thyroid panel, which is a good one. Again, I can help adjust my thyroid T4, T3 based around that. So those are the main labs. Um, I could have added on a GGT, which GGT is very liver specific. It's not in skeletal muscle. So if you had like elevated AST, ALT, add on a GGT and that can give you some better insight into like where these enzymes are coming from, uh, or, in, for, coming from organs into the serum. But anyway, just waiting around for labs to come. Um, still haven't adjusted the diet, but when we get to meal one, we'll talk about it. One thing like the later parts of prep, your indoor lighting setting, once you get to the finer details of, of getting lean, you might not catch a lot of them. So if, if you want like, you know, again guys, it's like when you're looking through IG and looking at like other competitors, like, oh my gosh, this guy looks freaking nuts. Like. If you get, if you really start to learn lighting, you realize how much more like certain overhead lighting settings are going to show more highlights, show someone that's leaner than they actually are. That's why we see a lot of guys who post photos and, and that doesn't translate on stage and they're critiqued for it. And so if you want some like true evaluation, like just the video I showed you, like in natural light, no casting of shadows, like this is gonna give you a very, very honest look at a physique. And what might translate over to stage as far as condition goes now keep in mind when you have a tan on that's going to soften you up so if you saw like i've you know you see a guy that posts a pic with a tan you're like oh man something's not something's off with his peak like no man it's, it's just they put a tan on and so you're not going to see as much detail as you are when you're like pale and in in like the natural light then also once you get to stage how those lights are casting shadows then from there what is the photographer like that's actually taking the photos? I've had stage photos where, man, I'm peeled to the bone, but the actual uh, contest photos don't translate it. So you really have to be in person to, to catch these things. But for evaluating your own physique at the tail end, you probably want to get out in front of some natural light so you can get a real honest look. My condition where it's at, like, I'm, man, I'm, I'm peeled. I'm ready to go. So at this point, it's just toggling food up and down to make sure I'm, I'm keeping training performance up and I'm not heading into peak week too sucked down. So I do want to be a little bit, but, uh, you know, 212 versus open, where you're looking at driving your, at 212, you're driving your car, like, into the filling station on zero it's on empty you got like one mile left <laughs> so it's going to take a lot more gas a lot more carbs to fill that tank up versus like hey prepping for open feeding up into peak week you're like how your tank's half full so you pull up the gas station you're not gonna have to put as much gas in which it's a, a, a consideration for like carb up but at this point i can i have the ability to keep that tank half full have good training performance heading into this peak week so I'll just keep talking till my labs come. <laughs> I have a really super sexy pool, pool boy, but we just found a, a snake in the pool. <laughs> a little baby snake. Saved from the pool. There's my pool boy. How much Dang. do I get paid? <laughs> Pro probably not enough. <laughs> the pool's looking a little uh, green though, Renee. What's, uh, what's the problem here? It's because we live in Texas and it's still hot as fuck. Yeah, we're, we, our pump went out and so it wasn't circulating, so now there's algae and the pool boy is trying to figure it out. I'm trying, I'm trying my best. I might get fired. Renee is my husband, just so you know. <laughs> she does the pool. If something breaks, she'll like take it apart and fix it. I do all the man stuff. Yeah, she'll go out and like trim all the trees and weed eat and... I'm just here to look look pretty <laughs> and be non-functional. <laughs> Do you want to choose your, your vein there? I can go anywhere. Are you okay with looking at your own blood? Yeah, awesome. no problems. As I'm like just passed out. <laughs> That's uh, one of the ones that you see mostly. I had a friend just like, just drawing blood. He uh -huh. would pass out. And um, he was just like, Oh, I don't like needles. And I was like, oh, okay. He's like, can I lay down? And I was like, sure. 
<laughs> he's up, but I don't want to talk. Don't talk to me. I was like, okay. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. All right. Sorry. All right. Meal one is finally here. My lab appointment was only an hour late, so I'm only starving. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. It's fine. Yeah, so meal one, I'll walk you through the actual foods that we have. So uh, this is 300 grams of egg white. I add in for these high carb days, I add in white rice, usually on top of things. That way I'm not adding in more fiber, but I keep my fiber standard. So this is 70 grams of white rice added in, was also 100 grams of asparagus and some Cholula sauce on top. Still using my like extreme wellness fiber tortilla. It's like 10 grams of fiber with some sugar-free peach jam on top. These were in my like bowl of oats. I just throw it now into a waffle maker. I have two more coming, but I just was going to go ahead and film this. But this was 60 grams of oats, 30 grams of pumpkin, and then 20 grams of whey with some stevia and cinnamon. And that's all there is to it. 75 grams of peaches. Uh, for multi, I am doing animal pack. And we also have my my vitamin array of items. So this was animal omega that's in the middle. Then I have a few different, some and some catered around me, like the orange ones, like curcumin for you know inflammation, um, organ health prophylactics. So like use NOCL cysteine year round. There's 1500 milligrams of tutka that I use. Uh, astragalus is a big one that I had been helpful. So I'm doing like six grams per day of that. Uh, my lipids are also really good. So I don't take a lot for lipids outside of the Omega, some citrus bergamot, and also olive leaf extract. And there's a few other odds and ends in there that I probably could do a whole video on, but we'll leave it at that so I can go eat this meal and I'll talk about the macros and what my rest of the day is gonna set up is gonna be. So meal one is done. Now I have my wits back to me so I can actually talk to you about the day and what we're doing. So just going day by day here, waking up, seeing the look, seeing how the visuals are, my weight's dropping down. Essentially, I'm just trying to maintain, I don't wanna fully go off the scale. You know, I want the best visuals, but it just so happens the visuals also correlate to a scale weight, right? Um, usually around 222 to 223 is, is, is a good mark where I can maintain and after a few meals and go train, like I have good training sessions. So that's important to keep performance up going into this show and a, a good level of fullness. I'm not looking to be full blown here because I am want to be just a touch depleted uh, going into peak week. So I can really take advantage of, of carving up. Again, carb up probably won't be as, as drastic, but um, that's the idea of how I'm toggling my nutrition around the assessment. So looking at visuals, assessing training performance, then seeing the scale from there. You know, that's just one other tool. So all things together, like I'm super conditioned, uh, feeling a little flatter today, so I'll put more food in. And based on previous data of like higher days, around 440, 50 grams of carbs is a good amount that doesn't blow me over with too much carbs. Usually weight comes up a pound, pound and a half. And so that's where I base today's nutrition around is my normal training day is 320 grams of carbs, 330, oh sorry, 320 grams of protein, 330 grams of carbs, and about 50 grams of fat. So programmed out today's diet, so I'm looking at it here in front of me to be, um, 440 grams of carbs. So added in 120 grams of carbs for the day. And that's just kind of spread out for the day. Uh, the, the macros off of this meal one that you saw were 62 grams of protein, 90 grams of carbs, and seven grams of fat. So that'll be meal one. I have five meals for the day that we'll go through. Why only five meals? Well, hell, I fasted for a long time before lab work, but I also like to fast in the morning anyway to get cardio in, posing in, and of course we're using agents that are mobilize and oxidize fatty acids in a fast state more efficiently. For naturals, you know, this is kind of a different conversation. Um, also, we're not necessarily worried about I'm gonna lose all this muscle fasting for a little bit. Um, so I, and, and then I have a big gap when I train, right? I've talked about this before. It's, it's, uh, it comes out to probably be about three hour gap and two hours of that is, at, is nearly all training. So during that time period, I nearly have a, a liquid meal that I, I, it's calmed down a lot, but I, I would prefer to have five food meals and then have like a intra-workout shake 
to fill in the rest of my, nu my nutrient needs for the day. So we'll go meal by meal and see what I add in. One thing I've been doing every week is having sushi. So there's probably gonna be some sushi in place here. Nothing crazy, kind of just rice fish based meal, but that's where we're at for the day. Okay, this is my pre-workout meal. We're in at a blueberry today, so normally I would have blueberries. Um, so no fruit, <laughs> but this is 80 grams of oats and 50, sorry, 60 grams of animal whey protein. I use cinnamon bun, which is delicious and just some cinnamon also to flavor it up. Now, for, like I said earlier, I just add rice into my oats and I'll just mix that up and eat it like that. So this is 180 grams of white jasmine rice. Um, all this totals up macro wise to 60 grams of carbs, 60, sorry, read that wrong, 60 grams of protein, 110 grams of carbs and eight grams of fat. So this will be the pre-workout meal. We'll get this down. We'll head to the gym for leg day. All right, we are in the gym, about to do legs. This will probably be my last all-out leg session. And this is 10 days out, which it falls in a weird timeline. Normally I'd have legs that kind of falls within the five to seven days out mark. So to have a last leg session be 10 days out, I could do it. I probably will at five, six days out, hit like a lighter leg session, like leg extension, leg curls, calves, something like something like that, um, yet to be determined. But anyway, continuing on the food for the day, my intra, uh, this has 15 grams of essential amino acids in it. Then with what I have in my pre, looking at about 25 grams of total amino acids. Then also I have some coconut water in here, which has 15 grams of carbs in it. So. A little bit of carbs and some aminos for during this leg session. We'll get to it and then we'll jump to the post-workout meal. I couldn't go by without showing at least one work set of legs. My pendulum squat, all the leg curl leg chin stuff, it's all right. <laughs> but the, the pendulum squat sets the tone for uh, where I'm at performance wise. And I, I just smash on it still, which is so much fun. So what for a prep, it's a PR. Went up five pounds, so this is uh, 205. Thir um, it was a rut match, so a five rut match, solid, super controlled, pause in the bottom, standard pace the whole way through. See some people like resting way too long at the top, like get your pace and keep it throughout your whole set. It should be a pace where you're not going to get cardiovascularly taxed. So some people are so fast out the gate, it'll slow down way at the end. Some's okay. Look at if you're like resting enough to dissipate some fatigue 
to where you can keep going in your set. Usually that's when you see a lot of the quality start dropping off. Post leg day, session was very good. Um, man, I love that pendulum squat. Just, and I, I rotate with the Roger squat too. I love both. I can't wait to get in the off season because I'm progressing my lifts now, which is so much fun. It's so much more fun prepping open versus 212. And the fatigue's so high in 212, you also have to be very cautious around injuries and, and, and lift profiles that could be a little bit more precarious. So I'm still 10 days out and same volume. Haven't had to even adjust my volume down because recovery stayed high and uh, been progressing lifts. So a lot of fun. And I think that's you know something to be said around like I'm coaching myself or if you're coaching yourself, knowing how to collect athlete feedback versus coaches feedback and I, I put this on my story like as an athlete there's feedback to have and a lot of times i think we mix it with what we want to tell our coaches you know your feedback should not be you know based around how flat you are or what you think you look like in the mirror where do you think you're holding water usually a lot of times i hear that back and it's it's inaccurate from an athlete and they miss reporting the other stuff that you need as a coach because as a coach, what you're trying to do is gauge how hard to push or when to pull someone back. So that's the kind of information you need. And then we're looking at fat loss as a priority. Most, you know, gym performance and upholding tissue is, is the secondary factor because you have to be skinned out on stage. So what information do we need as a, as a coach to collect that from our athletes? And number one is, is an accurate like recovery capacity assessment from that athlete. So that's getting back, you know, as me as an athlete, like what was my sleep quality the night before? Like, did I get my full hours? Am I waking up feeling rested? If not, what happened? Um, my perceived level of fatigue, this could be a scale of one to 10 overall, like my energy, my focus, my motivation. How does that feel today? Do you feel like you're buried in a hole? Like I can't concentrate, I have no motivation to train, fatigue feels really high, or do you feel super energetic, focused, and, and you know, motivated to train. That's a gauge of fatigue and recovery. Um, it might also be like, how do your legs feel if you're doing a lot of cardio, which is a thing on prep. Like, do they feel heavy? Like they're filled with concrete. It's, it's hard to, um, when you flex them, it feels hard to flex them. Uh, GI, do you feel, if the scale went up today, like, why do you think? Like, is it, do you feel like you have bloating in your GI? Your GI feels heavy, or was it that your legs felt heavy? All that gives us insight on the coach. Then other things that you want to know is like when you're posing and taking your picks in the morning, do you feel like you could feel the muscle when you flex it? Like you feel that would be feeling like you're kind of full. That's the feedback. Or feel like, man, I can't feel my muscles at all when I'm when I'm uh, flexing them. That's good feedback for us to know if you're flat. Then we want to know about gym performance. So coming out of this session, I'd say, man, my main lifts really progressed. Um, pump was moderate. That's on par for where we're at, right? But the main thing is looking at like my logbook moved up across some compound lifts and across some isolations it maintained so we're all like okay john is adequately recovering and fueled for this session those are check boxes for for the coach pumps moderate that's completely acceptable and then we'd also want to go through any like meal issues that the athlete had for the day you know where you like man after i hate meal four like i feel extremely bloated and it's sitting very heavy give that feedback to your coach so you can he help adjust that meal Anyway, my little ramblings around like, you know, athlete feedback versus coach feedback. Getting into my post-workout meal, more typical bodybuilding meal. So this is 180 grams of chicken, um, 240 grams of white rice, and 150 grams of vegetable medley. So we have all kinds of fun stuff in there. Broccoli, green, uh, snap peas, carrots. Um, I think there's a little spinach in there too. But red bell pepper so get some good variety in there uh this meal is 65 grams of carbs it is 70 65 grams of protein 70 grams of carbs and four grams of fat so i'll eat this now and then we're gonna head and go tan and then pick up sushi this is the best sushi place in san antonio if you ever need to get some sushi while you're here highly recommend the sunshine roll baked salmon roll and sushi fever roll man i should work here huh get a discount code all right so tanning so tanning um spoon this like pretty much every other day worked up to 10 minutes 
I'll keep doing it till I'm like five days out. I need it for myself, and I only do it for six weeks post show, so I keep the risk pretty low, skin, skin cancer wise. <laughs> um, skin care is huge, so like post shower at night, I do like cocoa butter lotion to keep the skin moisturized. It's made a huge difference for my stage look and up and holding color. Um, also, while in the bed, since you're laying there, it's when I do my abdominal vacuums. So, just some extra extra tidbits to, to give you some tips on how to get some extra work in. Tanning's all done. I can share with you because this video will probably be out after, is tomorrow is Renee and I's fifth anniversary. And I will be nine days out. So it's, we're kind of limited in what we can do. Um, but no excuses to, to not try to do something. So Renee and I's feet are, are rough. So we're gonna go get pedicures together in the morning then we're gonna go shoot guns, so I have to do something macho after that. Actually, Renee, she like loves shooting, shooting guns, so um, go to the range. And then I planned out, I'm gonna live through Renee, so I planned out a dinner that I'm gonna make for her, or we're gonna make it together, but I'm gonna, I have it all planned out, and we're gonna have a, a dinner outside by the pool, and I'm gonna go get all the groceries, and then we'll prep it together. So it's kind of a surprise, but we're doing a, rack of lamb, a lobster mac and cheese, and a balsamic honey Brussels sprout. So that is the meal that she doesn't know about that we'll be prepping. I won't be eating, but again, it'll be a, be a fun, fun time. And uh, just after the show, we'll, we'll have our time to have a true vacation or something to celebrate it. But anyway, if you're on prep, do your best with your lady and spoil her the ways that you can. Onward to home. Okay, meal number four. So we have our sushi, which you go ahead and like tell you what these macros are for the meal. Um, this is 55 grams of protein, 94 grams of carbs, 20 grams of fat. So what I do with the rolls, these are rolls that I always get on prep. Um, this one basically has like some extra, just poke, like chopped tuna on top and snow crab. And you see, it's just like, it does have some avocado. And I just tell them no sauce on these. Uh, this one is, is a, uh, has like mixed fish on top, has fish inside, and jalapeno and cilantro. So there's no avocado or extra fats really added to it. Then I do have my, it's 100 gram of lettuce, and uh, 50 grams of tomato, 50 grams of onion. And so this will be meal five. And I want to mention like, if you're gonna like, to try to cut calories and extra sauces too. Like you can make a lot of your own sauces as well. You know, with sauces for sushi, like the spicy mayo has a ton of fat and sugars in it. Uh, same with eel sauce has lots of sugars. So, I mean, you could use like, what I'll use is like Jihu's Polynesian sauce. This stuff can go great on sushi if you want sauce or just use like light soy sauce and put some stevia packets in it. You could even make you like your own spicy mayo if it's an option using yogurt sriracha and some um just stevia packets so you know save, save your calories for those sauces now i mean in the off season like I, yeah you know this stuff doesn't doesn't matter much if you can afford those macros but some people can't and so you know you want to be able to eat eat the good stuff and not just consume your calories from sauces so it's an option for you but anyway movie for the night is what is it renee renee's gonna be featured Okay, she didn't tell you. It's uh, Jurassic Park, the OG. So if we're throwing it back. Maybe we'll just do a whole peak week run of all the Jurassic Parks. I, I love those adventure dinosaur movies. But anyway, put this meal down and then we'll have one more meal for the night. Meal five, last meal of the night. You've seen it before, nothing's changed. I ride this all the way into peak week. Of course, like when I'm traveling, like this meal does just change just to whey and oats. So. Um, yeah, doing, still doing Ninja Creamy, uh, 25, total it's 55 grams of, of whey, and this has 240 mils of unsweetened almond milk in it. Then, still doing the oat cake, so it's 55 grams of oats, 30 grams of pumpkin, um, has half the whey added in, some baking powder, then also 8 grams of cocoa powder, 10 grams of peanut butter. And 
that wraps up that meal, which is, I'll tell you, 65 grams of protein, 55 grams of carbs, 20 grams of fat. And now for our total for the day, what we came out to, 315 grams of protein, 410 grams of carbs, and 58 grams of fat for this high day. So we'll have this in, we'll assess tomorrow. Again, we're going day by day. So if I need to repeat this day, probably wouldn't do sushi again, but I would repeat the same food amounts. In the next video you see, we will be in peak week and headed into or a few days closer to Legion. So hope you all enjoy and I'll see you in the next video. I just needed to point out that you're wearing a very appropriate shirt. I know, I put it on with intention. <laughs> <laughs>